Welcome to Karma's a Stitch. I'm Tanya. Um, this is a knitting crochet YouTube channel. And if you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back, you guys. Um, if you are new, I do my episodes so far this year for 2024. I've been doing something a little bit different. Um, so if you're new, here's your explanation. <laughs> I have an app on my iPad and it's a dice app. And I roll the dice every week and it, I have cubbies set up on a wall and in each cubby hole is one to two projects. So I roll the dice and it basically tells me which cubby hole and which project or which whip to take out of the cubby and work on. And I work on that project for one week. Um, at the end of the week, if I haven't finished, I show you guys my progress. We chat a little bit about how the week has gone. Um, any thoughts I'm having about the project and but if I do finish it then I don't wait the full week um, if I do finish it then I come back on on whatever day I finish it and show you my FO and talk about my thoughts on the project and then we roll the dice again and then we wait from a week from there so last week last Tuesday I rolled the dice. So we are gonna talk about that project. I am, however, doing a pajama polo. I have had such, we have had such amazing weather the last two days. Um, today is May 28th and it was 91 degrees today as I was driving over to a friend's house and it was 91 degrees. And we were doing some yard work and I was hanging out and we were having a great time, um, but it was hot. And I was covered in grass clippings and dirt. Um, I think they got a, I'm pretty sure they got a picture. I know they got a picture because I posed for the picture. Um, so I will include that. I was so dirty. So I came home and hopped in the shower and now I'm looking outside and it's super windy. and <laughs> We have thunder and lightning so we made it just in the nick of time, but I am in my pajamas ready for the night. I'm also ready to roll the dice. Um, so let's talk first about what I rolled last week. Last week, I rolled a project called um, the Reverse Loop Sweater. Yep, Reverse Loop Sweater. Here's pictures of it. Don't mind the coffee ring right there so sorry but i love the sleeves of this now the material that i am using for this project it's like a sweatshirt it's silk and cotton let's see if i can find the proper band um it's 35 percent silk 35 percent cotton and 30 percent palmide it is so amazing to work with it is noro Um, it's the Compietto base, and let's see here. When I rolled the dice last week, let's see, let's see. Here's the back of the sweater, and you can see the progress keeper right there. That's where I was last week. So that's the back of the sweater. And I've gotten quite a bit done. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I am at a point here, if you look down here, down here is where these are all the purl stitches, which was great the way the pattern was written because I got to work from the inside. So that wasn't all purling. I was working from the inside, so it was all knit stitches. Um, but then here you can see the very distinct line where then I got to start working on the outside again so that then I was also doing all the knitting um, but I have to do seven and a half inches of this. I don't even know where I'm at right now. I know I'm not at seven and a half. Let's see how far I've gotten. I'm at five and a half inches. So I have a ways more to go. Now I have two balls left of this and these skeins or these balls are 150 grams each 450 
meters, I believe. Yeah, 450 meters per skein. Um, and what I have left, as we just saw, so here's the front of it. Um, I have this, the sleeves that I have to do. And I'm gonna do a cowl neck. So when I'm wearing it, it's got a bunch of material right here, just kind of loosely gathered. So it won't be a hoodie, but it will have a bunch of extra loose stuff right here with these amazingly shaped, comfortable sleeves, which I love a good sleeve. So there's my progress. I will, there's the back of it. I will move the progress keeper down to the bottom because this is going to go back on the whip wall. Um, I figured it was a good place to stop because I had ran out of, it was time to join the next uh, ball of, of wool. So I decided, you know, instead of joining that, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to put it down. I have another tee that I had cast on um, last week or the week before at the yarn shop. It's a summer tee, so I'm going to show that one to you guys. Um, but I, I, I ran out of wool on this one last night, and so I just picked up this summer tee that I'm going to work on. But this one will go back on the whip wall. And I will roll the dice. Um, figure out which one is going to replace this reverse loops sweater. Now, the summer tee that I cast on at the yarn shop, it was either last week, uh, the week before even, maybe. It's called the Uptown Tee. Here we go. And it's by Tori Yu. But look at the lacy bit on the sleeves. I will make mine longer. Um, it calls for, um, the size I'm making, it calls for 800 grams, 800 meters, not 800 grams, 800 meters. And the material that I'm using, the skeins come with like 459 yards it comes with 459 yards 420 meters per skein so i'm using this queensland uh queensland collection dungarees rainbow tweed now i've made two outline tees with this material um, i have a really light purple outline tee and then a dark blue outline tee that i just recently finished so if you're if you're returning you will have seen that um, but let me show you my progress on this. This is one that I am keeping out and working on. Um, here's my, it's all scrunched up on the needles, but here's my progress. Here's the sleeves. Let's see if I can get a better, without dropping any stitches. Isn't that always the challenge? So there's one sleeve. The other one looks just like this, but on the other side. <laughs> So I am making good progress on this. Um, I love this material. I love this Queensland collection, um, the Rainbow Tweed. It has been, um, it's from Recycled Denim. Yeah, spun from recycled jeans. Isn't that cool? I love it. So I did get um, Erica at the yarn shop uh, ordered a bunch of this in multiple colors. I chose three different colors because I plan on making three summer teas this summer. And this is the first one of the three. So this one is staying out because I want to wear this one soon. I'm not going to wait for the dice to roll this one. Uh, this week, you guys, Alex, my daughter, is on summer vacation. We have had so much fun. Um, she she goes with her dad for a week and then me a week, but the week that she's with her dad, he drops her off in the mornings here um, while he goes to work. And it, the weather has been great. And we have six baby chickens, six chicks. And they are still so young that they're in the house. 
but they're old enough now, they're going on five weeks, they're old enough now that they have the majority of their feathers and I have a temporary uh, enclosure, <laughs> I don't know what else to call it, a temporary thing set up in my backyard where we can put them outside for, you know, a couple hours now because it's so nice out as long as they've got water and they've got some shade, which I make sure that they do. But Alex and I were able to get them outside for a while today. We do have to sit out there with them um, because like today there was a squirrel trying to jump into their cage, <laughs> into their enclosure. So we're having to watch that pretty closely. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's, I've only been on here for 10 minutes and I, I feel like there's more stuff that I was going to share with you guys. But it's always when I, it's always when I turn off the camera that I remember. Like last week I was sharing that FO with the Salty Days tea or the Salty Days sweater. And I so badly wanted to talk to you guys about the bind off I got to learn how to do. But I'll save that for another. It was so much fun. I want to find an excuse to use that bind off again. It's called the Italian bind off. It was amazing. Um, what else? Is there anything else? I don't know. I don't know. Let's go roll the dice and see what I get to work on tonight. <laughs> okay, here's the whip wall. So as you can see, I've got cubbies. That one is empty. I need to go put that other T back in there. Um, but we've got cubbies one through six, seven, through 12, 13 through 18. And then if the dice rolls 19, I'll grab that bag. If it rolls 20, I'll grab that bag. Now I've got the iPad ready, but real quick, I'm gonna put that project right back in there. One second. Okay, there it is. So let's roll the dice. And when this dice, and I don't have any other apps open. Um, so when this dice app opens, there's two dice on here. The first one is which cubby. The second dice tells me which cubby or which project in the cubby. So let's say for example, it rolls this one right here. This would be project one, this would be project two. Because there are a couple of them still that have two projects in them. So let's roll the dice, five, one. So one, two, three, four, five. Now let's go see what's in here. I can already tell by looking at it what project this is. So um, this project, you're probably gonna hear me stutter over talking about it because there's certain things that I want to say and certain things that I don't want to say. Um, this was a tough one for me in that it was um, a mystery knit along that by Stephen West um, last year. And if you do Stephen West's projects, um, they are such an amazing learning opportunity because the way he gives instructions and the tutorials that he puts out, he, for me, um, is such a easy person to listen to that I really have always enjoyed his projects. I, I, I've just always enjoyed working on them and I've always been super gung-ho and excited about his mystery knit alongs. Now the mystery knit along last year, if you're familiar, you're familiar. And if you're not, you're not. Um, and that's okay. However, um, on my whip list, this project is not called the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. It's called the Orphan Shawl. And that's because parts of it um, are no longer Stephen West's designs. Um, there was a little bit of a controversy and the main focal point of the shawl um, he, he very respectfully asked people not to uh, 
utilize the initial clue that he had released. And he then released a second clue and a second uh, rendition for that clue. And, and then he encouraged people because there were so many people that were coming out with these absolutely gorgeous alternatives. And some of these people were incredibly generous in sharing the pattern or the instructions to utilize their modifications. Now, as soon as that was done, I didn't feel like it was a Stephen West in, anymore. Um, and so I, uh, I won't be sharing the centerpiece that I ultimately ended up um, using uh, just because it's, it was my choice and it was something that it's, I don't want it even associated because it wasn't his design any longer. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm gonna say on that. So if it seems weird the way I show you this shawl, it's because I'm trying really hard not to show you uh, the center bit that I ultimately decided because it is no longer Stephen West. However, these colors, you guys, oh my goodness. Let's see here. Look at that. Look at those colors. I did end up putting in some extra pops right here with the pink. Um, I am on the final section, um, which were these dip stitches. So I am on the final section of this, the final um, clue of this, this uh, mystery make along. So I don't think it'll take me that long to finish these. It might take me a little bit to remember how to do these dip stitches though. <laughs> so yes, that is where I'm at with this um, mystery shawl. Uh, and so I am going to work on finishing this. I have so much yarn left. I mean, I have a ton of each of these colors left. So I, I don't know how many more rows of these dip stitches I'm going to do um, because I have a lot of yarn left and I don't want to have a lot of yarn left. <laughs> so I will put a stitch marker or a progress keeper here so you can see where I'm starting tonight. I will come back tomorrow morning um, with a progress update. So you can see I've gotten a yellow, a green, a pink, a blue, and a purple. So I may do one more of each, to be perfectly honest. I may do that and, and see how I like it. Because it is beautiful. Oh, it is beautiful. And I remember these right here, this stitch here. That was so much fun. I really enjoyed that. So yes, I will work on these dip stitches and see what I've got. Um, I've got a week. And if I'm finished with the purple and I just wanna go through all the colors again, that may be what I do and then I may bind off. I'm pretty confident it's an I-cord bind off. So we'll see how it goes. All right, you guys. Good morning, it's Wednesday. Um, I stayed up last night and I worked on these dip stitches. And I got, I finished the purple and I started the next color. And I'm gonna, right now I don't know how far I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna, you know how when you work on a project, maybe um, at a graduation or you work on a project while, you know, you're waiting at a medical appointment, you're it become it, 
it becomes ingrained in your memory. Like this is the project that, and every time you sit and work on that project, it brings back those thoughts or those feelings. Um, I'm realizing, I don't know that I'm gonna enjoy wearing this shawl. <laughs> I don't wear many, I don't wear any shawls really. So I don't know that I wanna spend a whole lot of time um, or more, how much more wool I wanna put into finishing this. So I am going to keep going. Um, there are, I think 520 stitches or 500 and I don't know. There's, I, I haven't counted, but I think the last stitch count I saw was 520 ish. Um, and I know it'll be an I cord bind off. So I'm going to keep going. We'll see how many more of these dips, dip stitch, uh, stripes I ultimately end up putting in here and then I will see what I'm gonna do with this. Your guess is as good as mine at this point. Um, but I hope everybody's doing good and I'm gonna get this edited and hopefully uploaded. See you guys within a week. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.